I was I'm looking at a property here close by in Winter Park. Uh, is not uh, attached to an LLC, it's a private owner. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many units it is. I, I haven't seen the property myself in person, but uh, just looking at the at the pictures, it does seem uh, probably fairly large. Maybe something around 30 units or some 30 doors, 40 yeah. doors, something like that. I think they have two bedrooms. Um, I don't. I didn't see anything about three bedrooms. Um, it's close to a, a kind of a um, like a high uh, value area. It's a Baldwin Park. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but um, uh, like I guess m most luxury apartments in that area, but this one seems to be um, like an older uh, establishment. They've had it, I think, since in, since the 80s. Um, and so I, I wanted to approach them about the possibility of, of either buying or managing the property, but I wasn't sure exactly how to uh, – to maybe go about doing that. Okay. Uh, did you look on the property tax appraisers too? Just try to get an idea how many units. Um, I looked on there, but I, I couldn't really find. It didn't um, really help. The amount of units. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and maybe I just don't know how to break that down yet. Um, I mean, I could I could find the square footage and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. They probably. All right. So yeah, you may have to do a site visit, but um, so let's we'll uh. You know, we'll start from the top. So you have an idea. You feel like it's, you know, it's a play. Can you give me a – so this is just like a random – they own the property themselves. Um, and so you want to approach them about, a, you know, where, where they are, possible sale. Did you see when they purchased it? You said in the mid-'80s? Yeah, I can could, I could pull it up if you allow me just a, a second yeah. here. Sorry, I'm, a, I'm at work, so, I, you know, I got to jump out and <laughs> come attend no the meeting real quick. Problem. And you don't even have to really pull it up. Let's just walk it through. Let's see. I mean, even if you don't have the answers, I will plug in some answers. So, you know, we'll plug in variables. Um, so let's uh, let's do that. So let's assume that they bought it in the 80s. And the reason why I'm asking you, I just want to know, uh, the, the reason why I'm asking you is I want to know if it's paid off uh, or is there a loan or did they refinance it at some point? You know, so where are they in there? Where are they in the... Um, you know, uh, in, mm -hmm. in the in the in the realm of you know, either do they do they own it outright? Have they refied? What's the debt look like? You know, um, because that's going to have a lot to 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 do or say, um, and right. what they want to do with it. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, but really, you know, we're just speculating until we find out. But you kind of want to fact find and try to gather some of this before you sit down and talk with them. But I mean, even if you don't have any of this information, it's really now you just need to say, Hey, you know what, would you be interested in selling right now? You know, it's a very hot market. Would you be interested in selling and, uh, and just really get, get the feedback from them. I mean, yeah, I'm interested, you know, make me an offer. No. Um, you know, do you, uh, how's the management, you know, are you, do you have any issues? You know, we, we, we offer consulting, um, you know, um, these these are the these are the things that uh you know that that you'll probably want to really uh you know that you'll want to look at as far as you know how you get that conversation going with them and for me the conversation is is really how can I be of service to you so you know I I really wouldn't try to come to them with any agenda per se in the beginning I would try to build a relationship with these individual owners cuz that's always going to be key because, uh, you know, it, it, there may not be anything there now, but again, they may remember you um, years, you know, years on down the road, months the on down the road and reach out to you. So um, my number one for me, I'm just trying to figure out how can I be of service? And then there's is there, you know, and, and I might just briefly tell them a little bit about myself. You know, I work for so and so and, you know, um, you know, I work for someone that, you know, offers free consulting. Uh, he does what is called apartment rescue, you know, depending on, you know, some, some of, some, some of the owners I speak to are in distress, you know, the properties are, are running them and they're not running their property. They may want an evaluation. They may be thinking about selling and want an evaluation. They may be, you know, um, you know, thinking about refinancing and want an evaluation, uh, you know, whatever it may be, you know, we can, we can offer, we have a, a, a list of services and, 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 and at least a free 30 minute consultation that could that could possibly be of, you know, you know, of use to you if, you know, would that, would that be of use to you? Would you be interested in that? And that's kind of really what I, where I would start is just asking them a series of questions. And then, and whatever document you have, CRM, 
spreadsheet, um, uh, you know, or even some uh, an app on your phone that allows you to handle notes. For me, I like Notability. Uh, it's an app on the iPhone, and it just, you know, it gives you stamp time frames, you know, times that you spoke, it's dated, you can take notes, so on and so forth, but it just keeps things organized. But I would just take notes and have conversations and go on down the line and try to really set up meetings um, initially. Um, and I think that's probably going to be the be the, the wisest thing for you um, is to really right now just try to set up meetings and really listen. You know, uh, yeah, you know, they're going to ask you a series of questions, and you can deflect that. And, you know, actually, I'm not the one that does the 30 minute consultation. I'm going to push that on up, up the, up, up further yeah. up the line. That, that would be, be the the gentleman that wrote the book, Buy It, Rent It, Profit. That'd be you know Brian Chavis. You can Google him. You know, that's 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 who I I I work with. Um, and you know, he either buys properties, he either he offers free consultation. He's the one that's going to offer these services. I'm just here to kind of really fact find and figure out how I can be of service to you, and then plug you into the best possible service that we offer you. And or if there's no services that we you feel like we offer you, um, just listen to you. If there's anything we can do or be of assistance to you, you know, can you find better operators? Do you need better management? Do you need better maintenance? Is there anything we can do to help you? And and then, you know, then you just try to connect those dots and really try to be of service to them. And then you hand them your card and you exchange information. But for me, that that is what we're looking to do right now. And then if they're looking to sell, then we just push that on up the, the pipeline. And then we, you know, then you then you hand that off. Um you know, and then we start, you know, the process of running, you know, uh, you know, an analysis on the property. Um, and then we then you will talk with Joe, who's kind of like our acquisition guy. And then you would say, hey, listen, Joe, you know, um, this is a deal that I've that I that I have. It's uh, it's 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 you know, it's it's um, it's off market. Um, the own the, the owners interested in possibly selling or, or doing something with you all. And then Joe will look at it and say, yeah, this is what we can offer you as a percentage or if we can wholesale this and we make, you know, we make $50,000, here's your percentage, you know, then he'll work that out with you. But that's kind of the, kind of the idea of what I would, you know, really what I, what I would do as you're learning. And then, uh, you know, I was just really trying to create this pipeline and go out here and talk to these owners and figure out a way of be, being of service to them. All right. So as far as the services that, that I can approach it with, it's either if they're interested in selling, interested in like uh, management, whether that could be from a, a marketing standpoint or, or maintenance standpoint, and then the 30 minute uh, free consultation yeah, that's included um, in those type of things. Okay. Well, hey, Seuss, you know, I understand you have a 30 minute or 30 unit apartment building, you know, uh, you know, I notice uh, I've driven by and I've taken a look at the property or I've, 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 I've Googled Skyped it. Um, you know, I've, I've taken mm -hmm. a look at the property. Um, you know, would you be of, of interest in possibly either selling the property or would you be of interest in, in get a free getting a free consultation on how to uh, improve the overall value of the asset? You know, we can, you know, we, I have a team that can analyze the management. I have a team that can analyze the value. Um, you know, then we have teams that can plug you in the high, you know, plug you into the, you know, uh, you know, some of the best resources that you may not know that are, are available to you to kind of help with the efficiency of this business. Um, you know, uh, programs like Buildium and Appfolio. You know, have you have are you currently using property management software? Would you be interested in learning a little bit more about how to make your properties more efficient and and help you, you know, uh, create a price point? you know, for that. Cause a lot of these owners, you know, they may be running everything off a spreadsheet, 30, 40 units, and they may not really know about building them or, and if they do, they may think the price point is too much, but you know, if you can come at them and say, Hey, look, you know, Hey, Seuss, have you thought about these things? Because, you know, it can obviously help the efficiency of your property, increase the value of the, you know, if we can get mm -hmm. you know, net operating income up expenses down, obviously that creates more value for you. Uh, we can possibly look at an opportunity, Hey, Seuss, to refinance this property where you can pull money out buy another one uh, or, you know, prepare this project for sale. And maybe, you know, it's, you know, maybe, you, you know, you know what, depending on what your, what your goals are, uh, you know, that's the conversation that I'd like to have with you, Jesus. I really feel like, you know, no, no matter what you decide to do, I feel like I can be of service to you. Um, you know, uh, it, it, would that be something that, you know, would be of interest to you? Mm -hmm. Jesus? And then, you know, then I'm, now I'm listening. You know, I mean, because no matter which way they pivot, I need help with management. Hey, I got a problem with evictions. I got, 
whatever it is, I can hold a conversation. And if you can't hold that conversation, then what you got to do is say, okay, let me get a list of these concerns you have of this property. Let me put together um, a framework, a feedback, um, or, or, or some sort of, uh, um, you know, uh, intake form on this property. Mm -hmm. Address, let me get the units, how long you've owned it. You know what I mean? We create a quick feedback form that you go out and hit the streets with, and then you bring that back to me. And then I'll do the 30-minute consultation with them, with you on the phone, so you're listening and learning. And or if you can't be available because you're working, then my 30-minute consultations are always recorded, just like what we're doing right now. So then now you go back gotcha. to the matrix, and you're like, okay, well, I can go home and get the kids, get everything settled. Let me get, you know, dinner, speak with, you know, deal with, you know, with the wife, let's have family yeah. time. 9 p.m., okay, everybody's in bed, everything's cool. 9 p.m., I jump into the matrix, I pull up the video, and I go in, and I see what Brian spoke to my particular client, and then now I'm listening to what he said, and I'm learning. And then, or, you know, we play it back during the matrix, during our next coaching call. You know, um, you know, if you weren't able to get mm -hmm. the video, and now we look at the video and you listen and we listen together. And then we now talk about, you know, what you're learning and you now will have questions. Brian, why did you ask this? What did you, you know, whatever. Now we go through it. Right. You're, learning. you're constantly learning. Um, and eventually with taking the courses and the training, you'll be able to answer a lot of the property management, you know, um, questions yourself. You know, that's just naturally going to yeah. happen. You're going to be, you know, a very skilled, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm yourself and being able to answer a lot of the questions uh you know just by by listening i mean i can't tell you how many people i was telling somebody the other day that uh you know one of the persons that i probably would consider probably one of the smart smartest property management persons out there besides myself was my ex-assistant um because she sat and traveled with me all over the country and for a year mm -hmm. you know just was in the back of the room maintaining the room but, you know, through osmosis, if anybody ever <laughs> asked her a question, bro, about property management, she was able to and never step foot. I mean, well, right. I can say she never stepped foot. If you look at the 133 unit in the Kissimmee, I took her with me because uh, I had to fire the entire staff. So I asked her to come and she actually, you know, ran the ran the office and, 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 and helped me with uh, getting job listings posted and did the interviews. But that was, you know, I mean, she was able to just walk, never, never, this wasn't her she was a cake before me. She was a executive assistant for, you know, uh, uh, the regional uh, uh, director for Keller Williams. So she never mm -hmm. dealt with property management because, you know, for five years she's been in these classes and traveling with me all over the country. She was able to step into the property and direct maintenance and tell them and, hey, look, do this. She was able to get right. So that my point is, is that's where you're that's what the matrix is about. You're going to be so exposed to this. You'll be able to sit down with these owners and say, OK, you know, I'm listening. Talk to me about, you know, some of your goals, you know what I mean? And then they're going right. to say, I don't necessarily have a goal. I'd like to just get rid of this crap. Or, you know, I'd like to see if I can maximize the income. I don't have a, a, enough time. Or it could be like the gentleman, Steve, you know, I'm just looking to cash out and spend time with my family. Okay, how do we get you to your family? What do we need to do? Obviously, let's take a look at the property. Let's see where we are in the market. Let's see where your rents are. Let's, let's look at the gross potential income. Let's look at the effective gross income and the variance between those two are going to tell me how well you're managing the property, you know, so right, right, right. starting point. So, you know, then we're just listening and then we're able to provide whatever answers we need, um, you know, to the audience. Okay. Yeah, I got you. That kind of matches the formula you set up in the, in the matrix uh, to come up with the, the NOI and all that. Um, Absolutely. Take it, take it notes on that. I'm trying to <laughs> work on, uh, on figuring all that out. <laughs> oh yeah. Don't, but, uh, and and that, that'll be a mistake. <laughs> I think that, 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 that'll be a mistake is you trying to figure it all out right now. I think the number yeah. one job for you, especially, you know, from the, from the, from the respect of a wholesaler is to mm -hmm. learn how to, you know, um, how to engage the owner. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. how do yeah. you engage the owner? And I'm not asking you to have like, cause right now, if you try to come up and you try to uh, learn all this and force yourself to learn all this at once, when you do have an opportunity, which, you know, you're out here seeking opportunities now. So if you go out and mm -hmm. you start speaking to these owners and you have a hiccup, your credibility could be shot. So I'd rather you just be your authentic you and say, Hey, listen, right. 
I'm here to listen to you. I'm here to understand what your goals are, Mr. Owner of this 30 unit apartment complex. And then you just yeah. listen and you write and create, then you write and take that information and you put it into the feedback form. Then you bring mm -hmm. the feedback mm -hmm. form to me and then we set a course of action, what we need to do with this particular owner, which is set up a consultation. But now me looking at this feedback form and gathering this information that you now fact found as the wholesaler, now you bringing this back. Now I can, I can analyze a property like that. You know, this is all I know. This is all I've been doing. So I can understand where his value is. Again, I can quickly look at, you know, we can run a quick rental comps, right? We can look at the gross mm -hmm. potential income of that property. Then we mm -hmm. can look and ask them for a rent roll, a current T12, and I can look at where they are currently right now on their, uh, uh, on their, on their, on their uh, effective gross income. I look at the gross operating income and the effective gross income and the variance between the two, again, will tell me exactly how efficiently they're running this property from a management standpoint, from an operational standpoint, you see? So, you know, I, I, I can immediately kind of really figure out, you know, exactly what their needs are and then kind of come up with some, some sort of framework that can help them. So right. you know, if, if it's to sell, then we can say, okay, this, these are some quick action steps we can do to help you get this particular property ready for sale, which is increasing the, the, the value. And or, you know, if it's the idea is to be able to, to wholesale, you know, we can say, hey, listen, if you just want out now, then, you know, here's, here's what we can do. And then you can come, you know, or, and or, you know, is, is there an option for owner financing? You know, so uh, again, a lot of this is going to come by you just listening and asking them what their goals are. And, 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 and again, when we were in that Orlando RIA, we listened to what that gentleman was saying and we knew, I knew exactly what I needed to, to speak with him on. You know, I can hear that he loves real estate. I could feel like I felt, I, I heard that he didn't necessarily not want to get rid of everything, but that was an option if he didn't find what wasn't presented an alternative option. So for me, it was like, okay, I can still feel you're attached to being an, a, an apartment investor. You want to liquidate certain assets. So how can I come in and maybe possibly do some owner financing or how can I come in and take 25% of your portfolio as a general partner, run the entire portfolio and you just sit back and wait by the mailbox every month. And that's an gotcha, option yeah. I know that I felt like he would like because now he's not getting rid of the properties, but he yeah. felt like that would be an option, but he, he felt like, you know, he may have to get rid of them just because, you know, family wasn't willing to take over. They were, all of his kids were working full-time job. So, you know, I'm just listening at it, what his concerns were. So if I right. can have a rebuttal, you know, and then sometimes some people may say, you know what, this is just too much. 30, 40 units. I work a full-time job. I got involved with investing. I got in over my head because I wasn't, because at the operational level where you're playing around, Jesus, at this mm -hmm. level, under 80 units, under 40 units, under 30 units, you're going to be dealing with a lot, probably 90% of operators, owner operators. Okay. They used mm -hmm. to call it mom and pop, but I don't like the term mom and pop. I call owner operators. You're going to be dealing with yeah. owner operators. So they're going to have stress points and typically their stress points are going to be the operations because very few owner operators at that level of 30 or 40 units, especially if I know you own that thing, Jesus, for more than two or three years and you haven't, yeah. and you haven't added to your portfolio is a sure key sign or an indicator for me that you possibly are struggling on that property. Because if you weren't, the idea is we're, we're here to play Monopoly. The idea is that you start with 20 units, you get yourself and refi, and you get yourself another 20 unit, and you're building your portfolio. If you're not building your portfolio and you've had that one property for four or five years, that's a key sign or an indicator to me that something might be uh, you know, a, a, an issue at the operational level, that you might have scaled this thing too fast for you to be able to keep up with it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I just, I just pulled it up and it's, it's in a trust and it's, um, it was, it was sold back in 76. So they, they got in 76 for 774,000 and then, uh, it's gone through a quick claim deed and then some miscellaneous deed, I guess, through, through the trust, you know, it looks like family or something. There's only a hundred dollars mm -hmm. in it. Um, so I'm assuming it's, I don't know by now may be paid off or, but I, I don't see that that trust has any other properties other than okay, that, so, that. So the trust doesn't have any place. other properties. So again, that tells mm -hmm. us that they're not growing. You only get involved typically with real estate at this level to start with a portfolio mm -hmm. or an apartment building and grow the portfolio. 
That's how you build wealth. Gotcha. So if that, if that process has paused, tells me, and then also just looking at mm-hmm. the property. And again, if we, if you, 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 we don't even have to ask them about providing their rent rolls. If I just go on Zillow or I can go get some advertisement or I call the number that's ever, whatever's advertising for rents out there. And I call and I ask them how mm-hmm. much for their two bedroom. I get that information and I go jump on Zillow and I do a market survey or jump on Rentometer and I do a market survey in the area. And I realize if they're saying they're only getting 850 in their two bedrooms, but the market shows 1450, $1,450 for the market. I know there's, that's a huge variance. That's an operational issue. That's not necessarily a property issue. That's an, you know, it could be quasi, you know, part property, but really that's a management issue. If you're not staying on top of it, there's a reason why. So that means you either don't have the money to put into the units to get them up to where you can get them to a market rate or the management is just insufficient. Either way, that's a problem. Either way, that's an apartment rescue opportunity for you as the wholesaler to be able to step in and come up with a technique. And that's the key for, you know, for for you as the wholesalers being able not to really have to worry about having the pressure of learning what I know from the operational level, but to be able to do a quick back of the envelope evaluation uh, is going to be key. And that's what I'm going to be working on next week for you is to be able to get you a spreadsheet, your feedback form, that's going to be able to intake form. That's going to be able to allow you to ask yeah. the right questions. Cause all you got to do is read the form. So if you can read, yeah. <laughs> then you, you know what I mean? That'll be cool. Yeah. 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 Straight. <laughs> all you got to do is, just, sense, yeah. you know, you know, you practice your, your routine, but the number one thing that I could tell you as a, as a wholesaler right now, the number mm-hmm. one advice I can give you is to constantly read every time we leave these coaching calls to make sure you're disconnecting. And when you disconnect with me, that you're, when I give you your reading material and I give you your study material that you're studying it. But the most important thing is just make sure you're keeping your authenticity. And, and that right. authenticity comes from really understanding what the owner needs because yeah. other individuals are going to be coming at them from a sales perspective. There's two types of individuals right. in, in, in this business. There's people who mm-hmm. want to make money with you and people who want to make money from you. You want to be someone that makes money with them, not necessarily making money from them. Salespeople want to make money from them. You don't want to be a salesperson. Yeah. You don't want to come off as a salesperson. You want to come off as an advisor, number one. And good advisors do one thing better than anyone else. And do you know what that one thing is? Uh, make money with them? <laughs> no. Listen. <laughs> listen. Mm. Listen. Mm. The, best, the best advisors listen to what their clients need. They listen. The best husband gotcha. listens. The best wife yeah. listens. The best business partner listens. You know, you, 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 you lose when you're negotiating. The first person that speaks it's typically the one that loses when you're trying to negotiate. The one who sits back and listens, and then I can set mm-hmm. the table accordingly. I can find mm-hmm. out what, you know, how you get paid is, is by listening. I listen to their concerns. And then when I listen to their concerns, I just create a framework for them. And then, you know, it's, it's a lot harder than the wholesaling business. I get it. But it's a lot more rewarding. We're talking about building wealth. We're not talking about getting rich. You get rich wholesaling. You build wealth by owning right. By owning multifamily, and, and, and of course, it's going to take much more skill sets to be able to do this. But mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, that's what you signed mm-hmm. up for. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so um, that'll be perfect. Getting that 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 kind of that template that you were saying, so that I could approach and, and put together that form. Um, and then, on the opposite end, like they own one property, and then I found someone else do like list stacking that they have several properties throughout like Fort Lauderdale and majority of South Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, they popped up a lot of times with these older properties. Um, and it's, it's owner operated from, from what it looks like. Um, and I know you mentioned that, you know, the, the purpose of starting out with units like this is, is to grow. Would that be someone I would approach about possibly uh, managing the portfolio since they have, they, they seem to have acquired so many properties and have had them for so long. That question answers itself. So let's go back to what I just trained you to do. Yeah. What was the first thing after you made contact with the owner? What's the second thing we do when we get the meeting? Above all, we we listen. Yeah, listen. Find out. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't know. 
You know, I, I can mm-hmm. give you, I can speculate what these people might do, but that's not how, that's not how we get, we're not going to make money speculating. We lose money speculating. So what, right. what I ask you to do is, I don't know, let's approach him. Let's approach him. And when we approach him, we explain who you are and your credibility behind mm-hmm. what you're doing, but utilizing my mm-hmm. brand. And then you just simply yeah. ask them those series of questions that will be on your, on your, on your, on your, on your, on your feedback form. And then whether, and if property management is an issue, it'll, it'll present itself. And then if, when it presents itself, we won't press it. We'll say, we'll, we'll ask for some information. We'll look for rent rolls to be able to help them. Well, you know, again, that formula that I taught you about looking at gross potential income, that's just a quick back of the envelope way. Then we'll dive deeper by asking for their P and L's and then maybe their T12s and help them kind of really identify where the, where the issues are, which is going to be fairly easy, you know, especially with 30, 40 mm-hmm. units at that operational level. Then we'll create a framework for them that will help them succeed at bringing that value up. But as we're doing this, this might be an opportunity then for us to come in and say, hey, listen, you know, for 25% or for whatever percentage, you know, we can come in, we can operate this whole entire portfolio for you, stress-free. Now, because if it seems like management is your issue, you know, um, you know, then, 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 you know, there's a couple of options. You can hire a management company or you can give us a percentage of the deal. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you just take 10% equity in the, in the, in the property and, and some people, you know, this is where we'll have to negotiate and really show our value. But if I can convince right. people to give me 10% equity, which is minimal, and I run the whole show for them, I step in as a 10% equity partner, but as the general partner, as on, on the, you know, as coming in on the general partner side, if I can come in and say, I'll run the whole entire portfolio now, here's my expertise, I'll run this whole show, you just sit back, go home, wait by the mailbox, I'll send you the rent money every month. You know, mm-hmm. that might be worth 10% to them. And if I do that 10 times, yeah. I got 100% of something where I'd ever put my money into it. Just by using <laughs> my property management yeah. skills, bro. Yeah. Yeah, like absolutely, absolutely. Conventional, yeah, I like, I like that. I like that. Un- unconventional wisdom, what you get from a lot of the camps or classes, is these these real estate brokers. The problem with what a lot of their philosophy is, is they're just trying to receive a percentage of gross operating income. Okay, mm-hmm. they're trying to attach okay. a percentage of their man their management fee for six ten percent. Attach that to the gross operating income, and that's how they receive their, 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 their income. I'm trying to teach you that that's fine if that's your only option, but my number one option is to see if we can get ownership. I don't care if it's 5 10%. I don't care if we can, if, you know, if we can, do, if, if we can do 10% ownership, equity stake, and run the whole show, and we do that with 10 properties, we've got 100% of, of, of a, a multifamily portfolio without putting our money into it. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to get you to see is, is you take your skills and you look for ownership. Don't take your skills right, right. and look for percentages off the cash flows, which could be shut off at any time. Now you're an owner. That's a different position. We want to teach wealth building. Wealth building comes from ownership, bro. And that's it. It only yeah, comes yeah. from ownership. Gotcha. So, so the brokers, when it, and, and, Part of my, my, my ignorance on it, but the brokers, like what you're saying is that they take 10% from the gross. Yeah. They so take meaning 10% from the that, gross operating income. So let's just give it a quick example for you. So we got a duplex, both rent out for $500. Mm-hmm. Both sides of the duplex mm-hmm. rent out for $500. We got a gross operating income for that month of $1,000. The property yeah. manager would take 3%, 4%, 5% of that $1,000. That's their management fee. I'm saying reduce your management fee or manage it for, for nothing and take a percentage of equity in the property and then build your waterfall mm-hmm. structure based on performance. And then, you know, cash flows based on performance, not much you can do with two units. So let's just be honest, critical mass. Right, right. You use that formula to, to wrap your head around, use numbers that are really easy. But yeah. if we're doing that with 50, mm-hmm. 60, 80 units, we're able to build some sort of performance on a waterfall structure. I get you a certain cash mm-hmm. on cash return. I get you a certain occupancy rate. I get you a certain IRR. And IRR is about efficiency, you know, because, you mm-hmm. know, people get confused by that whole IRR. It gets really complicated. But really, when you look at IRR, it's really about efficiency. OK, more than anything, IRR is, is a measure of efficiency, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. And so if I can show you how I'm getting your money back. So whatever initial investment the investor put in the deal, if I can get your money back quickly. Or quicker by using my techniques and methods, then your IRR is going to go up you're going to be much more efficient. Okay. 
the, the, the deal is much more efficient with me operating it versus you operating it. So I might build a waterfall structure on that back end to where I'm receiving cash flows or income, you know, from, from that, t- that type of structure. So, and I don't want to get too far in the weeds because, you know, I don't want to, you know. Right, right. Right now, right now. I'm, yeah, I, I'm just crawling right now. I, I got God. you. So right now for, for me, I guess my next step, like, is just having conversations, talking to people, just yes. reaching out to these owners and just getting to know them, getting to know getting kind of what, what that conversation is going to look like, get that feel. And then once you get me the, the template, we go over the template, we create it together, however you want to do that you know, then going out and, and, and using that as a way to kind of uh, create, a, you know, a, 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 an easier, smoother conversation so that I know what questions mm-hmm. exactly to ask, how to fill out that sheet and then present it to you so then I can start learning there exactly you how you handle it after that. There you go. And that, stop yeah, right there. that sounds like a good and plan. Stop right there. Yeah, let's stop right that's there. It. Yeah. And that's all we got to do. <laughs> that's for that's the next lesson. move. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Just get that feedback yeah. for them. And then we build. Mm-hmm. Next week, mm-hmm. we're stronger. Week after that, we're stronger. Week after that, we're stronger. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I got sick, yeah. bro, and I had to learn how to walk and talk again and do all those things, I didn't, mm-hmm. I wasn't, you know, I didn't, a lot of this stuff didn't happen overnight. Mm-hmm. It was just small stuff. I learned how to tie my shoe. That led to, you know, something else. I learned how to, you know, I was always practice trying to turn the doorknob and stuff like that in my house. And that led to being able to do, it was just small stuff. Every week I just built on it, you know, and then now, yeah. I mean, now look at me. You would have never known, you know, that right. I, that I didn't know how to walk or talk and I had to restart everything. So, so right. I, I built on it. And so yeah. that's what we're going to do with you. We're going to build on it. So next week we intake form, we teach you how to, and we, and we, and we can go back and forth. Cause I like this going back and forth me being you, mm-hmm. you being the owner. Mm-hmm. Cause we got this mm-hmm. recorded. You can go back and, and this is how we sharpen our skills. Iron will sharpen iron here. Right. Right, right, right. All right, cool. And then, and then, all right, so this this is these are deals I'm kind of finding off of a list or or, or something that I kind of put together, um, just you know buy, buying the list. But uh, let me ask you, like, if I approach or try to build a relationship with, let's say, an agent or a broker um, to approach them about specific you know type of properties, is there like a certain um, I guess uh, like um, how do I put it? Is it like to give them the information they need to be able to know that, okay, I, I'm the guy um, to go to with these type of properties, whether it's, you know, a certain price range, high deferred maintenance, high deferred mm-hmm. occupancy, occupancy issues, um, you know, like those type of things. How do I approach, you know, brokers about possibly getting them to refer maybe certain deals drop. to me before they decide to put it on market? Yeah, yeah. you would name drop. Then that's when you would have to probably use me. Hey, look, I work with Brian yeah. Chavis, Chavis Capital. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a acquisition, uh, you know, intake guy. I, 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 I find deals. And this guy closes. You know, he pays for apartment mm-hmm. buildings cash, um, and that's really all you have to say. Google him. You know, you, you, can, right. you can Google him and see who he is. That's that's that's. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, I do I do my own thing, but I also work, you know, as a subcontractor yeah. for him, as an intake guy. You know, so if you have deals or opportunities in the multifamily realm, bring them to us. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, now I, I don't want to be um, like vague or necessarily, uh, uh, you know, kind of ambiguous with them. I, I want to kind of be a little more uh, specific because if I just give them a blanket statement, I feel like they won't really um, remember when certain deals come up. Right. right. So is Let's there a certain parameters. price range that I could give them? No price um, range because everything is so over. No price range. Over, everything is overpriced. Um, and typically if a gotcha. broker brings it to you, it's already overpriced because there's a markup on it that they want. Um, you know what I mean? So, you know, ideally the whole reason behind this whole wholesaling and reason why we want to work with the wholesalers is because you're trying to, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to get them at the, at the owner operator level. That's when they're still meet Mm -hmm. on the phone. Now, not to say that, you know, once it gets to a broker that there's no opportunities there. Yes, there's opportunities still there, but it's going to be, you know, there, there'll be less meat on the bone. So I would just, I wouldn't focus on value at that time. I just say, Hey, I'm looking for anything under 80 units. Uh, you know, I'm looking for multifamily anywhere between, you know, anything under 80 units and anything between 150 to 200 units. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Most of these brokers that are not so commercial, anything not under, 80 under 80 or up to 250. I'm sorry. Uh, anybody that that's not a commercial broker won't bring you anything over the 150. That usually is institutional. So you'll deal with commercial gotcha. CRE guys there. 
But anything under 80, you'll probably, you can, you, you know, you, you may come across a lot of, you know, brokers or agents that may have relationships with friends or investors that have deals that they may bring to you and not really know where the value is. And then that's where you would come in to be able to, to, to assess the value yeah. based on the back of an envelope evaluation. Right. Well, here, here, here's, here's, cause my plan, right. Is, you know, let, let's, let's do this, you know, where we, where we create this form, this template and I, and I go out there talk to people and grow, but I, but also, you know, developing relationships with, you know, whether it's brokers or other, uh, uh, people in in the market right mm -hmm. so like as i go to these real meetings and, and meet people I, I think where where i could possibly make the best connections right is through me being me and reaching out and, and just talking to people and just developing relationships Correct. whether it's with other investors other syndicators or or, or, or people that um that hold uh you know a, a large portfolio maybe want to offload stuff or you know whatever the case may be so I guess what, you know, while I'll continue to try to find off market deals, I think I could get off market deals from some of these brokers as I continue okay. to develop these relationships. Okay. All right. So, so that, so that, that's kind of why I'm asking you the question. So, so, so under 80, right. Anything under 80. And then you said up to 250. Is Anything that what you, under what you 80, said? You know, would uh -huh. typically be that broker, non-commercial broker, you know, they mess around. Right, right. 80% of their portfolio are 80% of their, their pipeline is residential home sales. You know, they may have mm -hmm. a few spotted uh, commercial projects here and there. You know, that's typically what you're going to find okay. at the RIA. Then, you know, you'll come across the more institutional guys, uh, commercial guys that you may, um, you know, deal with. And they will be, you know, anywhere between 150 and above uh, that institutional grade asset. You know, um, to be honest with you, you probably won't find, you're not going to find deals there because typically there's already a markup, but, uh, you know, but I'll never say never, mm -hmm. but I just want you to focus on where I feel you'll make hay and where you'll make hay is right. the 80 unit mark. That's okay. flying under the range. So 80 and units know that's is kind of the magic the number right now. It's the magic number because yeah. it's possible. There's, 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 you know, there's, there's, there's all kind of indicators of distress, you know, uh, with owner mm -hmm. operators doing it themselves, working full time jobs, having families, and then trying to take care of a 30, 40 unit apartment building. You know, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where All we're right. probably. And then, okay. and then for, uh, do I come to them and ask them for like something like a uh, high deferred occupancy or high deferred maintenance? Nothing. Yeah. I wouldn't Are even those get some involved of the... with that. Don't get involved with yeah. the conversations okay. and, and, and you just say, hey, listen, you know, this, this is what I can do. You know, we can buy an apartment cash. We offer free consultations. And then if you're talking to a realtor, bro, they're, they're not going to hear anything you say until you say commission, split, revenue share. They're really not going to have anything. To, 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 mm -hmm. I mean, they may look like they're nodding and listening to you, but they ain't until you kind of figure out, right. show them how they're getting paid. You know, uh, so that's how I would speak to them. You know, hey, listen, I have a program that will pay you for bringing in a referral and this is what that referral would look like. What does that avatar referral look like? It looks like a 40 unit apartment building, you know, owner is in distress. Management is not looking that good. You know what I mean? They need to bring up value. They've got three options, either keep owning it themselves, try to bring the value up, refinance or sell it or get new management in place. Um, that's what I'm looking for. And that's worth this to you if you bring it to me and that's it. Mm -hmm. that's where you got to start mm -hmm. with uh with it you gotta remember man a real estate agent a broker brother they're 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 sub they're contractors you know they're they're, they're, they're right they're, right right they only get paid they, they only eat what they kill so if you're not yeah. really talking about you know bringing them you know bounty they're, they're, you know they're gonna act mm -hmm. like they're listening to you you know but they yeah, right yeah you know, it's white noise until you say hey look if you bring this to me this is it's worth this dollar amount to you now you have their attention and here's my criteria what I just, what I just gave you right now, you know, that 80 gotcha. distress um, owner, and then give gotcha. them those three options of what the owner could do. Refi, you know, help bring value up, refi, uh, sell, uh, you know, we can insert property management, you know, not, not, you know, those are, those are three options we can immediately do. We can give them a, a, a quick evaluation of their property and help them assess the situation. So, you know, those yeah. are the things we can do. That's it's worth this to you. So if we do this, It'd be worth this to you, Mr. Agent, Mr. Broker, if you bring this to me. Okay. All right. And it, if I come across someone with like a large uh, portfolio with 
I don't know, something like a hundred different properties with, you know, a thousand units combined or something like that. And they want to, they have an issue with property management. Um, and then that's kind of our end. Is that, is that something we can handle? Like we can handle as far as something that we can handle. All right. Yeah, I just want to go with the confidence of saying, like, you know, I can back yeah. up what I'm saying. Yeah, and yeah. you don't have to blindly. worry about that. That that's that's right. that's that's the thing that I'm trying to get you to see that I want you walking away from. I don't need you worrying about the confidence aspect of it. I just need you to be a good listener. Right. That's it. If you can become a good listener yeah. and read off that intake form, that's all I need you to do. Mm-hmm. You let me worry about stress levels and 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 whether or not it's too large, too big. And you got to remember, the larger, the easier. The smaller, the tougher. So the larger the gotcha. apartment community is, the much easier it is to operate. The smaller the community okay. is, the tougher it is to operate. So I don't think, you know, you, you got, it's reverse. You know, don't, you know, when you bring those 20 and 30 units, that's when it becomes tough, you know, because it's yeah. not enough income to be, you know, to take care of. I, you bring me a thousand unit portfolio, there's enough income, you know, uh, being thrown off of that property to be able to handle good management. So good management, gotcha. you know, staffing it. Not just if I've got 10, okay. 15, 20 units, I can't staff anybody. So, you know, so just think in those terms. But, yeah, don't worry about the confidence level. That's where, this, that's where the, you'll start leaking oil and the wheels will start falling off. You just got to be a good listener to these, these investors. And then you just have to, to, to the broker and agent, you have to provide them a, a resource for income. You have to create revenue streams from, for them. That's the mm-hmm. mindset that you mm-hmm. need to have. If I'm speaking to a broker or an agent, my mindset is how do I create a revenue stream for them? If I'm speaking to an owner, I'm just listening to their concerns and I'm going to give them answers, you know, to, to any concern they may have that encompasses a uh, multifamily. Yeah, I guess. Okay. So I guess my, my concern is when I approach them, right. I name you as the, as my mentor or, or, or me as, you know, like your, your acquisitions, mm-hmm. you know, manager person, uh, We'll get that name. Uh, you know, down. selling we'll you. Acquisition, right. 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 Well, don't sell me. Yeah. You just, I, I work for the company. We do acquisitions just like we buy ugly houses. Mm-hmm. I work for, you know, Chavis Capital. We look for, for acquisitions. I'm an intake uh, uh, specialist for, for this company. And, uh, you know, amongst other things that I do on the side. But, you know, this is, this is what I do, you know, in the wholesale apartment commercial side of things. I, I work with Chavis Capital as an intake specialist. And that's the capacity that I'm here. Here's some information on Chavis Capital. And, uh, We'll get you brochures that you're able to download from the matrix and thing. We'll have you, you know, with information or if you have a tablet, you're able to pull up the website. And then uh, if you want to share a little bit about me, the founder of the company, that's cool. That, you know, anything that needs Mm -hmm. you to build a rapport, but then you just go into intake. I just have a series of quick questions. I only take 20 minutes. uh, Mr. Jesus, just want to ask you a few questions and and then you go right into your intake. form. Gotcha. All right, let's do that then. Okay. All right. Yeah. I was just trying to think of a way to come up to them to kind of, you know, get them to hear me out as I start, you know, yep. unrolling what, you know, what, what I want them to kind of tell me, like to start the conversation off, like, so that they understand what you know, kind of where I'm coming from. That's yeah. it. I'm going to tell so, you the best conversation is how can I help you mm-hmm. with your property? That's the best conversation start. How can I be of service, brother? That's what I'm, I'm what I'm trying to drill home to you. Mm-hmm. You're trying to figure out how to yeah. talk with someone like me that's an owner of a building. How can I be of service to you? You know, this is my background. Right. This is what I do. You know, I can plug you into someone that can help you with the consultant, but how can I be of service to you with your property? You know, um, you know, are you looking to sell? Are you looking to refi? Are you looking, if, is your management up to par? Whatever it may be on your particular property, I can be of service to you. You know, if you just give me 15, 20 minutes, I can give you a, I can ask you a series of questions and I can really help you you know, uh, you know, with your, with your, with your portfolio, I can help you, you know, you know, organize whatever your concerns may be. I can really yeah. help you with it, you know, in reference to your multifamily, Mr. Jesus, it doesn't matter what it is, whether, whether or not the issue okay. is management, whether the issue be I'm ready to sell, whether it be I'm ready to refi, you may not have an issue at all. You just want to make, just check the health and do a, a, a quick little, uh, uh, one, uh, physical this year and just kind of really see where your property is. We can help you there. That's it. If you just have 20 minutes, I'd like to take time and ask you a series of questions and then I can kind of help you better, you know, put together a framework for your property moving forward on, you know, you know, maybe some of the things that you probably should look at, you know, and if things are running really smooth, then this is just an extra, you know, this is, this, this is just an outside third party resource that will help you, you know, give you the nod that you're doing things, you know, correctly. Yeah. 
But very few okay. people at 30, 40, 15 units that you're looking at, very few people are running efficiently. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, there everyone can, right. can do can do better. And that's what you do. And if that person is really running really a tight ship, then you've built a relationship with that individual and you have them as a resource now. Because if they're running that efficient, that means they got great maintenance. They have great. So now you can kind of tap into that and, and, and build a good relationship with those individuals. So, I mean, there's all, it's always a win. Every time you sit down with an individual, it's always going to be a win for you because you're, you're, you're grabbing information with that intake form. You're building yeah. relationships and you're adding to your credibility. <laughs> Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm going to start calling out and I'm going to start uh, calling out and try to try to do that. Um, I guess just let me know when uh, we we'll have that intake, you know, you have form. The intake yeah. form. I guess and then I, I could. Uh, all right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Let me know if I can be any assistance with that. If I think of anything coming yeah. across these conversations or anything like that, I'll let you know. All right. Over to um, Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. I, I really, really, really appreciate it. All right, bro. <laughs> I'm we'll looking forward to it. Week. I'm glad we kind of came up with some high, a way to start here and, and, and That's get what it moving. This is about. This is get, get you started. Yeah. And get you moving. That's what this is about. One yeah, step. Yeah. Because last step. week was like, all right, let me find information. Let me see what it's all about. And then so I, I found the information. I was like, all right, well, now what do I do with this? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this, this was helpful, man. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We made a step. That's a hey, incremental progress, right? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Let's get it done. Appreciate right. it. Thank you, man. All right, brother. I'll talk to you, All right. see you next week. Have a good one. All right, you too. Have All a good right. weekend. All right, see you. All right, man.